Okay, um, we're going to uh, continue with question number 19. We already done about number 18 yesterday. And um, we're going to continue on the question 19. States Ohm's law. Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law? Uh, it says that actually Ohm's law is very easy. It's, uh, v over I will be a constant throughout the R. When we have a R resistor, when we have a resistor R, V over I will be constant throughout the uh, the graph so increase the you increase the v i will be also increased it will be a constant number r will be constant so this is the basic of uh, ohm's law so he says that actually in the in the words okay in the words he says that the steady uh, a 19a steady steady current through a conductor Okay, is directly proportional. My 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 work work is a uh, slippery. Yeah. Okay, directly proportional. Proportional to the potential difference. Okay, across the conductor. Okay, uh, if physical condition uh, such as as uh, uh, temperature T remain constant. Okay. So if we, uh, this is what I say, uh, uh, it's a ratio of V over R, okay, that uh, increasing is proportional. So R will be a constant value; it never been changed. So if you increase the V, uh, I also will be increased. So it will be a static value of R throughout the 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 experiment. Okay, if you have an experiment. So, uh, number B1, what is the ohmic conductor? Uh, ohmic conductor is a conductor, is a conductor that obeys Ohm's law. Okay, that obeys Ohm's law. So, any conductor that obeys Ohm's law, uh, this is what we call a uh, ohmic conductor. On ohmic conductor, it can be a uh, semiconductor, it's not ohmic. Uh, superconductor also is not ohmic. Uh, there are some of the conductor also is not ohmic. Mm, I forgot already some of them. Uh, so there are two types, ohmic and non-ohmic. Uh, non-ohmic means that uh, it doesn't have a straight line. So if you have a, a, a V over I like this, so it doesn't goes into a straight line. It can be a curve, goes up or goes down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have to do something. It's very slippery. My my, Ecom is very slippery. I can't drive on it. Okay, it's moving. <laughs> How to write on a moving paper? It's hard. Okay, my. Uh, B two. Okay, B two. Uh. Give example of ohmic conductor and non-ohmic conductor. Uh, ohmic, ohmic conductor, uh, non-ohmic. Okay, ohmic conductor is constant, constant stirner, constant wire. Okay, uh, at constant temperature. Uh, this is actually a wire that we have been used so many times. Okay, like a copper wire, it's a constant wire. Uh, non ohmic is a filament lamp. Filament lamp. Okay, filament lamp is not a, a ohmic, it's not a ohmic conductor. Okay, C. What is a filament lamp? Filament lamp is a is a wire that we use to light up a lamp. So you have a you have a menthol. 
So inside the mentor, there will be a wire. You can see from outside of the of the glass. So that uh, that's a coil. You see inside the the filament man is the we call as well. Uh, is the filament wire. Okay, it it does not uh obey the ohm ohm uh, laws. Huh? Okay, C shows the foot equivalent to what per ampere. Uh, this this is a a question about uh the dimension. Okay. So I'm going to erase all the ink on the slide. Okay. So dimension. Okay. Where's the pen? Okay. So dimension of what per ampere? So V equals to J over C. Okay. J over Coulomb. Okay. Watt over Coulomb. Uh, J over C. C equals to AS. Okay. And equals to uh, J over S and times back with I over A. Okay. And this one will equals to uh, W over A. Okay. Watt per ampere. And watt ampere is W per uh, watt per ampere in, in another method of writing. Okay. So D uh, potential across potential difference across 2.0 volt is applied across the tungsten wire of length 2.0 meter and cross sectional. What is the current of the wire? So resistivity. Resistivity. Remember, resistivity is uh, rho. The symbol is rho. It's not R. It's rho. So uh, R equals to uh, rho L divided by A. And we have uh, I equals to V over R. And uh, R over here, you can uh, substitute as uh, V A divided by rho L. Okay. So you substitute everything uh, 2.0 times uh, 0 0.8 times 10 power negative uh, 6 and divided by uh, 5.6 time 10 power of negative 8 and this is 2.0 so you have the answer will be what 14.29 ampere okay so 14.29 ampere uh, is how much the current flows into the wire okay e uh, this is a Kirchhoff law where you have to use Kirchhoff first law and Kirchhoff second law uh, Kirchhoff first law is all about the uh, current that entering a junction and out of the junction and Kirchhoff's uh, second law is about uh, potential difference uh, where we have uh, potential drops between all of the resistor. So at the end of the at the end of the loop, the the potential difference should be zero. Okay. So we goes for this one E. A diagram shows EMF of the battery E1 is 20 volts. And external resistance is negligible. The EMF of the battery is 80. So this is 80. And internal resistance of R is 5 ohm. Okay. Find the current in resistor R1, R2 and R3. And find for the difference across the resistor. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, we have to find where is the loop. There are two loops over here. Uh, we see that uh, this is a positive. This one positive. So... It will go to the loop, it will be counterclockwise in this way. And this side will be a clockwise direction in this way. Okay. So from there, we have to use a um, Kirchhoff first law and Kirchhoff second law. Okay. So first of all, we use a first loop first. Okay. We're going to uh, make an expression on the first loop. So E1 okay, equals to... Uh, before that, we have to we have to name the the current that is flowing. Okay, so we name uh, this one as I one, and we name this on the right side as I two, and this at the R three we name I three. Okay, and also uh, we. Going have a general statement. We uh, I one plus I two equals to I three. This one you can get from the 
you can get from the diagram, you can see that I, I3 is separated into two, I1 and I2. Okay, so we continue with the with the equation E1, so equals to I I three okay R three and plus I one R one okay and you know that I three is actually I one plus I two R three plus I one R one okay so you have twenty equals to eight uh, I one plus I two and plus before I1. Okay. End up with 5 equals to 3I1 plus 2I2. This one we put as first uh, equation. And we have the second loop. That is E2 equals to I2 plus, eh, no, sorry, I2 I2 R2 uh, okay plus uh, I3 R3 and plus I2 R2 Ah yeah you have here R2 internal uh, resistance for the E2 so that's why we have 1 2 3 T terms over here okay so uh, we can ex expand uh, with uh, I2 R2 or this is more R R2 plus I1 plus I2 R3 plus I2 R2 you have 80 equals to 5 I2 plus 8 I1 plus I2 plus 10 I2 and you have 80 equals to 8 I1 plus 23 I2 and there you have this is as the second equation okay so if you combine I2 and 1 either you times with 8 you times with 3 you end up with uh, I2 you end up if I2 equals to 3.77 ampere okay 3.77 ampere and uh, you uh, if you substitute back I2 into not any uh, equation either 1 or 2 you have I1 equals to negative 0 0.85 uh, Ampere. Okay, zero point eight five. It means that uh, it was in this direction. Okay, the current are flowing in that direction. Okay, it's because of the actually it's because of eighty volt over here is too big. It's bigger than twenty volts, so it's the majority of the of the current that is going to flow in in its domain. Okay, in its domain. So it, actually, I one is in opposite. Okay. So I3, if you continue the calculation, I3 you will have 2.92 ampere. Okay. Now, uh, by using the current, you use the Ohm's law V equals to IR. So V1 R, V1 equals to I1 R1. So I at the at that uh, I1 it will be 0 0.85. No need to use a uh, negative because the negative only shows the direction of the current. Okay. Uh, times V4, you have 3.4 volts. Uh, V2, also IR, equals to I2R2, equals to 7.7 volt. V3 equals to I3R3, and it equals to 2.92 times 8. So you have... 23.36 volts okay so that will be the answer for uh, 
uh, the whole thing. Okay, so the first thing uh, you have come, uh, you came up with uh, this kind of question. First of all, we may uh, find out where is the the loops, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay. Uh, and then I uh, use a uh, Kirchhoff law to make a uh, equation uh, by using that loops. And then you combine all the equation. You, you of course you you have end up with a simultaneous equation by using that simultaneous equation. You find out what is the answer. Okay, it's not very hard actually. Uh, the working that will be marked is actually uh, the the things that are very important is this one. Okay, this is very important. Where the examiner wants to see either you you uh, know the concept of uh, Kirchhoff law or not, and this one, of course, also you have to show to the examiner. Okay, to the marker, is not very similar to the marker. Okay, uh, so this part actually is not very important to show, uh, but you have to show uh, this part that is the. Uh, the end up of the equation uh, this one and this one so things that should be very important things that uh, should be shown to the to the marker is this one okay and this one of course the answer should be there okay remember to put the 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 unit uh, the unit is very important okay uh, you may ask me uh, it, is the uh, negative is important or not? Yes, is uh, is important. For this part, I one equals to negative zero point five eight. We have to we have to show that is a negative. Okay. Meanwhile, in this side, you're going to find the magnitude. Uh, no need to put the negative. Okay. Are we clear? Okay, everyone clear with the with this question, with the answer of this question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, next slide give a definition of capacitor, inductance, and reactance. Okay, um, so this is you can get this one from your book. Okay, 20A1 capacitor. What is capacitance? Abi, what is the capacitance? What's the mean by capacitance? Capacitor or capacitance? Capacitance. It's not capacitor. It's a device. No. Okay. Capacitance. Uh, as a charge plate. You know it. There's capacitor. Hmm? Um. Uh, capacitance of a capacitor is the ratio of the charge on a plate of the capacitor to the potential difference between the plates. Okay. Correct. Okay. To the potential difference between the place okay correct uh usha why is the inductance usha inductance usha you went to the toilet yes sir ah. why is the inductance ah, why is the inductance the property of an electric conductor or circuit that causes an electromotive force to be generated by a change in the current flowing. No. Okay, just read what I'm, I'm writing on the board. Just read. Wait, sir, I can't see the screen. Okay, here I can read. Okay, the ratio of induced EMF in the secondary coil to the rate of change of current in the primary coil. Okay. So that will be the in induced. Okay. Inductance, sorry, sorry. it's inductance. Okay, number three, reactance. Sheridan, what is reactance? 
reactants uh, it is the opposition to the current and voltage it is it's the opposition sir opposition it's the the is like the current that opposes the direction of current and voltage okay uh, so it can be just just it's the opposition of the flow current flow in the uh in the ac circuit ac power uh one more you yeah. can use uh is a the ratio of peak voltage okay actually this is a uh, another method but it's using the ohm's law actually okay peak voltage to the peak current uh, or the ratio of rms voltage to the rms current you see, actually, it's very similar to Ohm's law, V over I. Okay. Okay, B1, how does the reactance of capacitor vary with frequency? Uh, capacitor XC equals to uh, 1 over 2 pi FC, right? 2 pi FC. So, XC is invariably proportional to the frequency so we can say that uh, reactance of the capacitor is uh, varies inversely as the frequency okay that's it so that will be question uh, a1 to 3 and B1 and 2. Okay. So we go to B3. I have to clear up all these things. Okay. B3. Uh, B2, sorry. B2. The B3 experiment which you allow to plot a graph showing the variation of reactants with the frequency of capacitor. Okay. In that case, you need a, a AC supply. You need an ampere. Uh, ampere, uh, it's emitter and goes to volts meter over there and the volt meter must be uh, parallel to the capacitor remember uh, volt meter must be parallel to the measurement so it must be like this uh, emitter it must be series to the the measurement things that we want to measure so it like this so let's say we have a resistor let's say we have resistor you have to connect a resistor to a meter like this so this is a resistor it must be connected like this okay must be connected like that if you want to find the current of the resistor you have to connect it like this okay so it must be series for emitter for meter must be in parallel so in this case you see the emitter is series to the uh, capacitor meanwhile the voltmeter is parallel to the capacitor okay mind that it's a very actually basic very basic thing should be uh, you have to know this is a general knowledge uh. okay form 5 also you have to be you have to know uh, this thing okay should be no so v first of all uh, record reading reading of current uh, from it from emitter okay and v uh, from from voltmeter okay and then uh, reactors xc equals to v over i is calculated and then uh, this is number one number two number three uh, repeat the variable uh, frequencies F from a frequency generator. Okay, 
and then we have to plot number four plot graph of x c against uh, f. Okay, that's it lah. The if you want to find the well, small experiment, eh? very basic experiment. What is the reactance of a capacitor when the frequency is zero? If frequency is zero, reactance will be infinity. So you see that uh, x c equals to what directly uh, from the inverse of the f. If f equals to zero, so x c will be infinity. Okay. Uh, number four. Going to clear up all these things. Number four. Uh, x c. What is the frequency of supply when the capacitor is uh, and the potential difference across P and the circuit? Okay, x c equals to V over I. Okay, and 1 over 2 pi Fc, and fre frequency equals to 1 over 2 pi Fc, and, oh, 2 pi, sorry, frequency ah, equals to 1 over 2 pi Cv, because now we have F as the equation title. So we have 35 times 10 power of negative 3 divided by uh, 2 pi 5.2 times 10 power of negative 6 and times with 18 so you have 59.5 hertz okay so this one will be the frequency explain how the resonant frequency of the coil and capacitor can be determined okay mm, C how do you mean coil and the capacitor in parallel coil and capacitor in parallel can be determined SNM frequency. So you have to set up A like that. A then you have a you have a so, uh, AC source, and then there will be a coil over here, and a coil will be parallel to the capacitor. Okay, C. So this is L, C. Uh, the frequency first. The frequency. Frequency from a variable frequency generator. So we have a frequency generator, and we we tune in the frequency generator until uh, the emitter reading is zero. So we tune in until this emitter equals to zero ampere. Okay. So there the frequency. Uh, of the generator generator is now equal to the resonance of the circuit so actually we want to find uh, at a certain frequency where is collapse between uh, inductor and the capacitor okay because we know that is uh, inductor has x l equals to 2 pi f l and x c equals to 1 over 2 pi f c this frequency at certain point okay at certain point uh, it will be overlap and causing the current to be zero means that it has very uh, very big uh, resistance okay very big resistance to the to the uh, to the circuit so if I put a graph one will be like this right okay one will be like this one more will be going up because one point one, one pi one over two pi fc and two pi fl so this point is actually we call as resonant okay we have a zero uh, resistor okay zero resistor so um, this is uh, the end of the question uh, this uh, paper 2 okay we have uh, 3 more minutes with a uh, with zoom so any question you want to ask before we end the class no sir Abby any question no, sir no sir no anyone going to I sleep I did wrong for I did wrong for B sir B okay yeah I did I redo okay so remember, you have one day tomorrow. Will be off for physics. Uh, do you do the question of uh, 
third paper okay and then uh, on the friday we start to discuss the objective okay okay sir okay see you on friday bye sir thanks sir okay